The following is meant for entertainment and educational purposes. It is not meant to establish a doctor-patient relationship. Please consult your mental health provider for your mental health needs. Hello, welcome to Shay Arik, my home where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply it to your life. And we are doing the William James series. This is lecture one, part three. I split up the lecture one to three parts and I hope you're enjoying it. So far, William James has made a couple of steps. The first step he made was that he separated the question of religious origins or existence or its characteristics with religious significance. And then the next step he made was to focus on religious genius as the way to understand religious experiences. He then talks about medical materialism to say, we shouldn't really care too much about the origins of things. We should care about its, ex its experiences and it's really unfair to say that when something has, let's say, a patho pathological origin, that we just throw it out, throw it out. He kind of is against that idea. Maybe you agree with him, maybe you don't, but it is an interesting concept nonetheless. So part three, we're going to be finishing off his first lecture uh, here. William James kind of continues with his point on, uh, I guess, his criticism about medical materialism. He says, he kind of points out that if we say that someone is, let's say, very productive or they're performing really well or they're functioning really well, it's superior, right, to some, in some way, do we then go out and point to the biology of that person and say, oh, it's their biology that's causing it? Not really. We take it for what it is. For example, when someone is happy and another person is sad, we don't get a blood sample of the person who's happy. We try to get a blood sample of the person who's sad, right? And then we just recognize the person is happy and let them be. Or if someone makes a really good argument or presents a really good idea, we take the argument and the idea for what it is. We don't measure their temperature. That's a specific example William James, William James uses. We don't measure their temperature to say, okay, you had a good idea, but are you feverish? Are you delirious? We just want to make sure. We don't check it, right? And William James points out that what feels good isn't always true, right? And that there are moments of emotional and mystical experience that provides an enormous amount of, he says, internal inner authority and insight. However, they don't come very often. They don't come to everyone. And the rest of life seems to contradict them rather than confirm them. So for example, let's say someone has a very strong conviction about what they should do. Uh, let's say they really feel strongly about a cause and let's say they pray a lot to God about this and God says, yes, move forward with the cause. Even though everybody else, everybody else says it's the wrong thing to do, right? And it feels there's a lot of conflict with this to continue with the cause, to continue fighting for the cause that you feel largely for and that you feel compelled from a divine source to continue the cause. This causes a lot of conflict, which requires a lot of what William James says is spiritual judgment to figure out how to navigate through. But it's really not about being happy. It's not about, you know, uh, having a, a good source, right? It's about something more, and that's what he's trying to uh, get at. This conflict that's within the religious experience can't be resolved by a medical test. You can't say, I have a religious experience, I feel convicted to do a particular thing, Get my blood level let's just make sure it's really true okay you can't you, you can't do that that's not how it works and you know some would say that these geniuses right come from pathology but william james argues and throughout that you know could it possibly be that this genius is also very valuable i mean you can opinions shouldn't be discounted by attacking the individual they should be discounted by attacking the the uh, argument itself the, the fallacy i don't know what's the fallacy name again it's uh, you're just attacking the individual i forgot the name of it but there's a logical fallacy and that makes sense you can't just say you know someone says oh i think that we should spend less money in the budget and you argue back by saying you are a jerk therefore we shouldn't listen to you and it's like it doesn't matter how much of a jerk i am we should really focus on whether or not we should decrease the budget and the value of a logical argument or a judgment is the thing that we should really care about to see if it's reasonable and if it's helpful. 
And we really shouldn't get deep into whether or not it is biologically a pathology of some sort, because you would say that's kind of unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Now, you could use origins of an idea um, as a criteria to whether or not to believe it, but William James further criticizes that medical materialists, people who say that because religious ideas come from a biological source, it should be worthless, it should be thrown out, he says that they're being really unfair. He accuses them of being dogmatists because medical materialists seem to only look for biological origin when a supernatural origin is proposed. But then when any other origin is proposed, they don't look for a biological cause. In fact, all things have biological causes. It's really unfair just to look for biological causes when it comes to supernatural things. And ultimately, he also accuses the medical materialists of not actually looking at the actual argument. He also makes the case that couldn't a divine being need a pathological mind to communicate what it needs to communicate? In other words, it's possible that a divine being that's very complex and very mysterious and hard to understand would not be able to communicate an idea that's really far out there, that's really like out of left field, and would actually need a pathological mind that doesn't have the natural constructs of understanding society or even self or things like that to then say something and say it in a meaningful way that it actually distributes and uh, uh, gets spread all over the, the world, right? Or to significantly influence uh, the people around. If we use, let's say, Joan of Arc's uh, story from before, Joan of Arc had a vision and she talked about this vision throughout and it gave a lot of encouragement to the people of France, to an army, and they kind of were victorious all the time. Maybe that's what God wanted to do through what we might call an epileptic event or through some sort of religious event. That's what William James would potentially argue. However, he does point out, you know, if all we care about are results, why do we care about pathology? Let's just look at the results. But he says that pathology helps us understand things better. If we understand the pathology of people, we understand where the human mind exaggerates things and then twists them around. And that's really, really important to understand what's really, really going on. And so that's kind of why William James would really, really want to focus on the religious geniuses and where pathology exists. So what are your thoughts? Does the origin of things really matter to you in, in terms of its belief? To what extent are you able to just look at the argument? To what extent do you really care about the individual that's making that case? It's a little bit of a balancing. On the one hand, you don't want to have a, uh, a logical fallacy of just blaming the person, attacking the person. But on the other hand, it, it kind of like makes sense to care about the origins. I talked, discussed this in part one. So where, where are you at? Where, where are you at with this? You know, let me know in the comments below. If you like this, do like and subscribe. I really enjoy your comments. I love, you know, replying back. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, just wanted to give you a small update on the book that I'm writing. I'm going to be changing the title to Welcome to Shea Arik, Psychiatry and Religion to Improve Your Life. It seems to be more fitting. The other one was a little bit of a mouthful. I'm still working on the first revision. So in time, hopefully I'll get it done. Hopefully I'll get it done. Wish me luck. Keep you updated. Thanks. Bye.